The wind whipped through Samantha Ray's raven hair as she stepped out of her car, the gravel crunching beneath her heels. Ravenswood Manor loomed before her, a gothic behemoth of gray stone and dark secrets. The place she once called home. She hadn't set foot here since that fateful summer ten years ago, when forbidden desire and dangerous truths collided, shattering her world like the stained glass window in the manor's foyer. The night she fled, betrayed and brokenhearted, vowing never to return. Yet, here she was, drawn back by tragedy and the cryptic note clenched in her fist. Four words that changed everything. It wasn't an accident. Her father was dead. The police ruled it a suicide, but Samantha knew better. Knew that the demons lurking in Ravenswood's shadowed halls played a sinister role. Now, she had to face them once more. Face him. Lucas Davenport, dot I. Her stepbrother. The boy she loved with a passion that consumed her. The man whose secrets might have killed her father. As she climbed the steps, the massive oak door swung open, revealing a tall figure silhouetted against the dim foyer. Piercing blue eyes met hers, stirring a storm of memories and longing in her heart. Hello, Samantha. That deep, familiar voice wrapped around her like velvet shadows. Dangerous. Intoxicating. Welcome home. Samantha stepped over the threshold, into the haunted realm of her past. Into the twisted labyrinth of secrets and lies that could lead to her own destruction. She had to find the truth, even if it meant unleashing the darkness within. The funeral was a somber affair, black umbrellas shielding the mourners from the weeping sky. Samantha stood apart from the crowd, numb and hollow, watching her father's casket disappear into the earth. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. A hand touched her shoulder, warm and heavy. Lucas. His presence sparked through her like electricity, even now. Especially now. I'm so sorry, Sam. His voice was low, thick, with shared grief. I know how close you and your dad were. Close. The word twisted in her gut. If only he knew the truth. The ugly, unforgivable truth that drove her away all those years ago. She shrugged off his touch, steeling herself against the flood of memories. The stolen glances. The secret touches. The searing kiss that shattered everything. Ancient history, she muttered, turning to face him. Time had been kind to Lucas. At 28, he was devastatingly handsome, all sharp angles and coiled intensity. But his eyes. His eyes held the same storm she'd tried so hard to outrun. Is it? He searched her face, looking for chinks in her armor. Then why did you come back? You know why. She pulled the crumpled note from her pocket. This was in Dad's study. Someone knows what really happened to him. Lucas frowned. The police said, What? I don't care what the police said. The words burst out of her, sharp and jagged. He wouldn't do this. He wouldn't just leave me. Like Mom did, she added silently, disappearing into the night. Abandoning her to this haunted place and its dark prince. Lucas' expression softened. He reached for her again, but she stepped back. I need answers, Luke. I won't let Dad's death be just another Ravenswood secret. His jaw tightened at that. You always did like poking hornets' nests. And you always liked keeping me in the dark. The old bitterness crept in, tasting of regret and lost chances. Guess some things never change. She brushed past him, striding towards the manor. She had work to do. A mystery to solve. No matter how deep it took her into the past. The attic was thick with dust and shadows, cobwebs clinging to every surface. Samantha wove through the labyrinth of forgotten treasures, seeking one in particular, her father's old chest. She found it tucked in a corner, half buried under a moldering tapestry. The lock was rusted, but it yielded to her hairpin and a bit of determined persuasion. The hinges creaked as she lifted the lid, releasing the scent of old paper and mothballs. Inside was a trove of memories, photo albums, yearbooks, love letters from her long-vanished mother. And there, at the bottom, a leather-bound journal. Her father's journal. 
hands shaking, she lifted it out, brushing away the dust. The pages crackled as she opened it, unveiling her father's neat, slanting handwriting. Entries dated back to before she was born, before Lucas and his mother came into their lives. She skimmed through the early years. Anecdotes about her parents' courtship, her birth, snapshots of a happy family. Then the tone shifted. Mentions of arguments with her mother. Suspicions of infidelity. Bile Rosa in Samantha's throat as the story unfurled through her father's anguished words. Her mother's betrayal. The divorce. The hurried marriage to Lucas' mother, Vivian Donnick. A second chance that soured like milk. And then, the final entries. Rambling disjointed. Full of paranoid theories and talk of a great evil infesting Ravenswood. Of dark secrets that would bring ruin on them all. The last page was a single sentence, underlined three times. It's not safe. Footsteps creaked on the attic stairs, startling Samantha out of her dark reverie. She snapped the journal shut, heart pounding. Lucas appeared at the top of the stairs, a troubled look on his chiseled face. What are you doing up here? She slid the journal behind her back. Nothing. Just looking for something. In Dad's old chest? He moved closer, floorboards groaning under his feet. It's not, she started, but he was already there reaching past her for the journal. His chest brushed her shoulder, sending sparks skittering through her. He smelled of clove and pine, of stolen autumn kisses and broken promises. She jerked away, reality dousing her like icy water. Stop it, she snapped, at him and at herself. He held up the journal, frowning at the cover. What is this, Sam? Nothing that concerns you. She grabbed for it, but he lifted it out of reach, flipping it open. His eyes skimmed the pages, widening in shock. Jesus. Dad thought mom and your mom. I don't know what he thought. Lies, roiling in her stomach. The journal made it plain as blood on snow. Lucas closed the journal, fixing her with a penetrating look. Did he ever mention any of this to you? Before he died? Samantha shook her head too quickly. No, he. Never, never. The lie tasted of ashes. Because the week before his death, her father had called her, voice shaking with fear and drink, rambling about twisted family trees and tainted blood, begging her to return to Ravenswood to stop the cycle of darkness. He needs your light, Sammy, he'd slurred, hysterical. Without it, he'll be lost, consumed. She dismissed it as grief and delusion the broken ramblings of a broken man. But now, ju now, the journal cast it all in a sinister new light. A portent of doom. A dying declaration. She had to find the truth. Had to know if the evil stalking Ravenswood lived in its stone walls, or in the blue-blooded monsters who walked them. Even if one of those monsters was the man she still loved, with every shattered piece of her heart. Lucas' fingers brushed hers as he handed back the journal, electricity arcing between them. She met his gaze, saw the old hunger lurking there, tempered by something new, something dark and knowing. Samantha, he murmured, her name at once a plea and a warning. Overhead, thunder cracked like a gunshot, making them both flinch. The moment broke, and Samantha stepped back, clutching the journal to her chest. I need to be alone, she whispered. Please. Hurt flickered across Lucas's face, but he nodded, turning for the stairs. If you need me. I am. I won't. The words rang hollow even to her ears. He paused at the top step, looking back at her. Yearning and reproach warred in his storm blue eyes. Then he was gone, taking the light with him leaving her in the dimness with the spiders and the specters. Samantha sank to the floor, the journal falling open in her lap. Tears splashed the brittle pages as a decade of grief and secrets came pouring out. The next morning found Samantha in her father's study, the journal spread open on the mahogany desk. One sunlight filtered through the heavy drapes, casting a sickly pall over the room. She'd spent a sleepless night poring over the cryptic entries, 
trying to decipher the twisted riddle of her family's past. The infidelities, the betrayals, the whispers of something darker, more insidious lurking beneath the gilded surface. Now in the harsh light of day, the words seemed to mock her, taunting her with half-truths and dead ends. She slammed the journal shut, frustration coiling in her gut. A tap at the door made her start. Come in, she called, hastily sweeping the journal into a drawer. The door creaked open, revealing a lean, elegant figure. Vivian Davenport glided into the room, perfectly coiffed and clad in a black sheath dress that hugged her curvy silhouette. Samantha's stepmother had aged like fine wine, all sleek sophistication with an undercurrent of danger. Samantha, darling. Vivian's smile was a red slash, sharp and cutting. I thought I might find you here. Samantha tensed, bracing for the inevitable barbs. Their relationship had always been thorny, a tangle of resentment and rivalry. Vivian saw her as a reminder of Samantha's mother, the woman who'd stolen her husband's heart long before Lucas was born. Vivian Dati? She kept her tone clipped, neutral. What can I do for you? Oh, I think it's more about what you can do for yourself. Vivian perched on the edge of the desk, crossing her legs with feline grace. Snooping through your father's things isn't going to bring him back, you know? Samantha's fingers curled into fists. I'm not snooping. I'm looking for answers. Answers? Vivian arched a perfect brow. Or ghosts? The question hit a little too close to home. Samantha looked away, jaw tight. I just want to understand why he did it. Why he... left me. Oh, honey. Vivian's voice dripped with false sympathy. Your father was a troubled man. He had demons none of us could fight. She paused, a calculated beat. Especially not you? The implication stung like nettles. That Samantha had failed him. That her love hadn't been enough to save him from himself. You don't know anything about my father, she bit out. Or me. Don't I? Vivian leaned forward, her lily and verbena perfume cloying in the close air. I know he was obsessed with the past. With sins he couldn't forgive. Her ice-blue gaze cut to the drawer, concealing the journal. Whatever you find in there, it won't bring you peace. Only pain. Samantha met her stare, head at on, unflinching. I'm not afraid of pain. Vivian's lips curved, a dark amusement dancing in her eyes. We all think that. Until it's tearing us apart from the inside out. She stood, smoothing her dress. Lucas is worried about you, you know. He only wants to help. The mention of Lucas sent a traitorous warmth flooding through Samantha's veins. She tamped it down, focusing on the bitterness, the betrayal. I don't need his help. I don't need anyone. Oh, my dear. Vivian's laugh was silver and razors. Everyone needs something. Even you. She glided to the door, pausing with her hand on the knob. You can't outrun the past, Samantha. Sooner or later catches up with us all. Then she was gone, leaving only the lingering scent of hothouse flowers and decay. Samantha dragged in a shaky breath, trying to center herself. Vivian's words coiled around her heart like thorny vines, squeezing and cutting. Was she right? Was digging up the past a fool's errand, destined to bring nothing but heartache? Part of her wanted to dump the journal in the fireplace and let the flames consume its secrets. But a larger part, the part that had loved her father fiercely, faults and all, couldn't let it go. Couldn't rest until she knew the truth, no matter how ugly or painful. Mind whirling, she opened the bottom desk drawer, seeking the bottle of Glenfiddich she knew her father kept there. Her fingers brushed cool metal instead. Frowning, she pushed aside the detritus, pens, paper clips, a stray cufflink, and pulled out a small pewter key. It was old, tarnished with age, with a strange symbol etched into the bow, a raven with wings outspread. The breath stilled in her lungs. She'd seen that symbol before. Pressed into a wax seal on one of the faded letters tucked inside the journal. A letter written in a spidery, unfamiliar hand dated the year of her birth. Heart pounding, she scrambled for the journal, rifling through the pages until she found it. The seal was identical, red wax flaking under her fingertips. She scanned the contents with rising dread, 
dread that sharpened to icy horror as the pieces began to fit together with awful clarity. My darling V, the letter began, our secret is safe. The child will never know her true parentage. She will be raised as Garrett's own, never suspecting the darkness that flows in her veins. The letter fluttered from Samantha's numb fingers. The darkness that flows in her veins. The sins her father couldn't forgive. Suddenly, it all made terrible, twisted sense. The fights before her mother vanished. The way Vivian looked at her, equal parts loathing and fear. The yawning chasm between her and the family that was never quite hers. Lucas. Shame scalded her cheeks as she remembered that forbidden, fateful kiss. The desire that had burned through her like hellfire, heedless of the blood they supposedly shared. Because they didn't share it at all. The poison in her veins, the rot at her core, it belonged to another. A phantom father, whose shadow had haunted Ravenswood all her life. Samantha shot to her feet, nearly upending the chair. She had to get out. Had to breathe air not choked with lies and secrets. Had to outrun the truth bearing down on her like a freight train. She stumbled through the foyer, dizzy and near blind, flinging open the heavy oak door. And froze. Lucas stood on the wide stone steps, haloed in the thin light. Hands shoved in the pockets of his black suit pants, tying collar askew dark hair tumbling over his brow. His startled gaze met hers, can something hotter sparking in those stormy depths. Sam? What's wrong? He stepped closer, reaching for her. You look like you've seen a ghost. Hysteria bubbled in her throat. Not a ghost, she choked out. Just the monster I've been all along. His brow furrowed. What are you talking about? His fingers brushed her wrist, searing her skin. She jerked back as if scalded. Don't. Don't. The word trembled between them, an echo of that summer night, that stolen kiss. Don't touch me. You don't know. You don't know what I am. Pain and confusion clouded his eyes. You're not making any sense. Come inside, let's talk about this. No. She shook her head wildly, backing away. I can't. I have to. I have to go. She whirled, nearly tripping down the steps in her haste. She couldn't face him. Couldn't bear to see the revulsion, the hatred that would twist his beautiful face when he learned the truth. The unforgivable truth. Samantha. He called after her, anguish and frustration mingling in his voice. Don't do this. Don't shut me out. Not again. But she was already running gravel spraying beneath her heels, lungs burning and heart shattering. Running from the shards of her broken life, the fractured past rising up to claim her. Running from the sickening, impossible truth. The truth that would forever mark her as tainted, an abomination. A blight on the family tree. Because if that letter was true, if the monster whose blood she carried had stolen more than her mother's honor, then she and Lucas weren't siblings at all. The desire that consumed her, the forbidden love she'd spent a decade denying, was her birthright, her damnation. With a moan, she crumpled to the ground, gravel biting into her knees. Tears coursed down her cheeks, hot and scalding. She couldn't breathe, couldn't think beyond the roaring in her skull. All this time she'd thought the poison was Lucas. That he was the one with darkness in his veins, rotting him from the inside out. But it was her. It had always been her. She was the monster. The secret. The shame their twisted family tree had borne like a poisoned fruit. And now that she knew, now that the truth had shattered her world like the mirror Vivian smashed the night she caught them together, all those years ago, she could never go back. Never again be the girl she was. Never look at Lucas without seeing the abyss between them, the unscalable walls of blood and betrayal. But she had to know more. Had to unravel the tangled skein of lies, no matter how it cut her fingers to bloody ribbons. She climbed unsteadily to her feet, clutching the pewter key like a talisman against her racing heart. There was only one place that held the answers now, one repository for the dark secrets of Ravenswood. 
her mother's old room. The room that had been sealed since the night she disappeared, locked away like a crypt. The room Vivian never spoke of, and her father refused to enter. The dark heart of the manor's mysteries, where the ravens gathered to whisper and mock. With shaking hands, Samantha slid the key into her pocket, drew a steadying breath, resolve crystallizing in her veins like black ice. The hallway stretched before Samantha, long and shadowed, lined with generations of Davenport portraits. Their painted eyes seemed to follow her, whispering accusations, as she made her way to the east wing. To her mother's room, her hand trembled as she fit the pewter key into the lock, the raven symbol staring back at her like a baleful eye. The tumblers clicked, stiff with disuse, and the door swung inward with a groan of rusted hinges. Stale air rushed out to meet her, thick with the scent of dust and decay. Samantha stepped over the threshold, heart in her throat. The room was just as she remembered from those hazy childhood days before her mother vanished. The four-poster bed draped in faded damask. The dressing table cluttered with cut glass perfume bottles. The heavy velvet curtains drawn against the world. But now, a patina of neglect lay over everything, dulling the once rich colors. Cobwebs drifted in the corners, and the floorboards creaked ominously underfoot. Samantha moved to the dressing table, fingertips skimming the dusty surfaces. Her mother's silver-backed hairbrush still lay there, strands of dark hair snarled in the bristles. A lump rose in her throat at the poignant intimacy of it. She turned to the wardrobe, its mahogany doors looming like twin portals. Hands shaking, she wrenched them open, half expecting a skeleton to tumble out, grinning and accusatory. But only her mother's gowns greeted her, limp and faded on their padded hangers. Samantha touched one hesitantly, satin whispering beneath her fingers. The dress her mother had worn to the last Christmas ball, before... Hot tears pricked her eyes. All these years she'd told herself her mother had left because of her. Because she was too much trouble, too wild and ungovernable. A disappointment to the perfect society wife. But now, now, she knew the truth was far more twisted. Far darker than a little girl's self-loathing imaginings. Swallowing hard, Samantha turned back to the room, gaze sweeping the shabby elegance. If there were answers here, they weren't immediately apparent. Perhaps it had been foolish to think her mother would leave a trail of breadcrumbs, leading to the heart of the labyrinth. Ariadne's thread, guiding her out of the depths of Ravenswood's secrets. She was about to abandon the search, to flee back to the cold comfort of her own room, when she saw it. A corner of white peeking from beneath the bed. An envelope, yellowed with age. Heart stuttering, Samantha dropped to her knees, stretching to grasp the paper. It crinkled in her hold, brittle and whispering. She knelt there on the dusty floor, the envelope heavy in her hands. Dread and wild hope warred within her, twisting her stomach into knots. Part of her longed to tear it open to devour the truths within. But a larger part quailed in terror of what those truths might be. The dark corners of her history, dragged at last into the light. The poisoned roots of the family tree laid bare and rotting. Hands trembling, she slid a finger under the flap, tearing it open with a dry rasp. A single sheet of folded paper fell into her lap, spidery script covering the page. Dear Samantha, it began, if you're reading this, then my worst fears have come to pass. The secrets I tried so hard to bury have clawed their way to the surface and the past has caught up with us at last. Tears blurred the words, smearing the faded ink. Samantha blinked them back fiercely, her mother's voice echoing in her mind as she read on. I'm sure by now you've found the letter from V. I know how it must have shaken you, how deep the shock and betrayal cut. But oh, my darling, the truth is so much worse than you could ever imagine. The floorboards creaked behind her. Samantha jolted, letter crumpling in her fist, as she spun towards the sound. Lucas stood framed in the doorway, his face a mask of anguish in the wan light. His blue eyes bored into hers, dark with hurt and accusation. So, this is where you ran. His voice was hoarse, scraped raw, chasing a ghost instead of facing me. Lucas. 
she stumbled to her feet, the letter clutched to her chest like a shield. I can explain. Explain what? He advanced into the room, a coiled spring of tension. Why you've spent the past decade pushing me away? Why you'd rather wallow in the past than admit what's between us? You don't understand. Panic clawed at her throat, choked her voice to a whisper. I'm not. I'm not who you think I am. Then tell me. He caught her shoulders, fingers digging into her flesh. Tell me what has you so spooked. What dirty family secret was worth shattering my heart for? The words quivered on her tongue, toxic and aching. The truth that would forever change everything, shatter the fragile house of cards their lives had built. But before she could give them voice, a crash echoed from downstairs. The tinkle of shattered glass, a thud of heavy objects overturning. They froze, bodies locked together, breath mingling in the charged air. Then a scream rent the air high and terrified. Vivian Dottein. Lucas paled, his grip on Samantha's shoulders tightening convulsively. What the hell? More crashes, the unmistakable sounds of a struggle. Shouting voices rough with aggression. Vivian's screams climbed in pitch, muffled and desperate. Samantha's heart seized. Someone's breaking in. We have to help her. She wrenched from Lucas' hold, letter fluttering forgotten to the floor as she dashed for the door. Fear and adrenaline sang in her veins, drowning the murky anguish of moments before. She flew down the hall, slippers slapping the carpet, Lucas hot on her heels. They pounded down the grand staircase, nearly tripping in their haste. The scene in the foyer rocked Samantha back on her heels, a cry of horror strangling in her throat. Shattered crystal lay everywhere, glinting like tears in the candlelight. The antique console table lay on its side, spilling wax fruit across the parquet. And in the center of the destruction, Vivian sprawled bonelessly, her golden hair fanned around her head like a halo. Blood trickled from her temple, vivid against her ghostly skin. A dark figure loomed over her, ski mask obscuring his features. He held a knife to Vivian's throat, the wicked edge kissing her pale flesh. At their gasps, his head snapped up, eyes glittering coldly above the mask. Well, well. His voice was a menacing purr. The lost lambs return to the fold. He pressed the knife harder against Vivian's throat, wringing a choked whimper from her bloodless lips. Just in time to watch Mummy Dearest pay for her sins. Samantha's heart stopped, ice flooding her veins. His words echoed the letter burning a hole in her pocket, the impossible truth she'd run from. From the corner of her eye, she saw Lucas, tense, coiling to spring. Desperate to shield her even now, even after everything. The intruder's eyes cut to him, knife flashing and warning. Ah, uh, uh, lover boy. Not unless you want dear stepmummy's pretty neck to match her Louboutins. Vivian shuddered, a tear streaking down her ashen cheek. Lucas vibrated with suppressed violence, fists clenched white-knuckled at his sides. What do you want? Samantha was shocked at the steadiness of her own voice. Why are you doing this? The man chuckled a grating sound devoid of humor. Oh, Samantha. So young. So naive. He shook his head mockingly. This is just the beginning, little bird. The first taste of the reckoning your precious family has earned. Dread nodded her stomach. Reckoning? For what? For the secrets. The lies. The beautiful poison they've fed you over the years. His voice lowered to a hiss eyes glittering like a snake's. Did you really think it would stay buried forever? That the darkness that sired you would never come calling? Samantha swayed, bile rising in her throat. Behind her, she heard Lucas' sharp intake of breath, felt the weight of his stunned gaze on her back. The intruder laughed, low and vicious. That's right, little bird. Time to come home to roost. His head cocked, considering. But at first, a little trimming of the family tree. Light glinted off the knife as he raised it high, angled towards Vivian's straining throat. She bucked against his hold, eyes wide and terrified in her bloodless face. A scream built in Samantha's chest, clawing up her throat. A shot rang out, 
sudden and deafening. The intruder jerked, knife flying from his hand. He crumpled to his knees, crimson blooming across his chest. Lucas stood over him, their father's old service revolver smoking in his steady hand. His eyes were chips of blue ice in his stark face. Get away from my mother, he growled. And stay the hell away from my family. The intruder wheezed a bloody laugh, hand clutching his chest. But his eyes, fever bright above the mask, never left Samantha. Oh, I'll stay away. For now. Blood bubbled on his lips, frothing and macabre. But you can't escape the past, little bird. It's in your blood. In your bones. His eyes rolled back in his head, body going slack. Vivian scrambled away from him, sobbing, crimson smearing her skin. Samantha stared down at the fallen intruder, numb and reeling. His words hounded her, circling like carrion birds in her mind. You can't escape the past. It's in your blood, in your bones. She looked up and met Lucas' stare across the carnage. Something crumbled in his gaze, betrayal and devastation skating across his features. The last illusion shattered like the crystal at their feet. Lucas, she whispered. I can explain. Don't. His voice was jagged ice, cutting her to the quick. Just don't, don't. He turned away, shoulders rigid as he went to Vivian, pulling her weeping form into his arms holding the only family he had left. Samantha's chin trembled, tears scalding her cheeks. The letter seemed to burn in her pocket, its revelations ashing on her tongue. The police swarmed Ravenswood Manor, stark in their navy uniforms against the faded elegance. Samantha watched numbly as they cordoned off the foyer, the intruder's blood staining the parquet like a macabre ink blot. She'd given her statement mechanically, the words ashes on her tongue. Yes? She'd had heard Vivian scream. Yes, she and Lucas had run to help. No, she had no idea who the masked man was or why he'd targeted their family. Lies, all of it. The acrid tang of them coated her throat, threatened to choke her. But the truth, the truth was too terrible to give voice. Too twisted and damning. So she swallowed it back, let it fester like a tumor in her chest. Let it gnaw at her. In the accusing weight of Lucas' gaze, the betrayed set of his jaw as he held a trembling Vivian. He hadn't spoken a word to her since the police arrived. Hadn't even looked at her, his eyes shuttered and cold. An impenetrable wall, slamming down between them. She couldn't blame him. How could she, when the very foundation of their lives had crumbled beneath them? When the poisonous secrets she'd spent a lifetime running from had finally clawed their way to the surface rotting and putrid? Her fingers curled around the letter in her pocket, nails biting into her palm through the fragile paper. Her mother's words seemed to beat in time with her racing heart, damning and prophetic. Oh, my darling, the truth is so much worse than you could ever imagine. Samantha squeezed her eyes shut, hot tears leaking from beneath her lashes. All her life, She'd yearned for the truth of her origins, ached to fill the howling void left by her mother's disappearance. Now, the cruel irony of it choked her. The truth, sinking its talons into her heart, shredding her to bleeding ribbons. The truth that her father wasn't her father at all. That the poison in her veins, the darkness she'd always sensed coiled in her marrow, had a source more twisted than she could have ever dreamed. Vivian's choked sobs pulled her from her spiraling thoughts. Samantha watched as a paramedic draped a shock blanket around her stepmother's narrow shoulders, murmuring soothing platitudes. Vivian clung to Lucas like a lifeline, her bloodless face buried in his chest. He stroked her hair, whispered reassurances into her ear. The perfect son, shielding his mother from the horror that had invaded their home. Sudden, Irrational anger sparked in Samantha's gut. How dare Vivian play the traumatized victim, weep and tremble like a maiden untouched by sin? When Samantha knew, with a certainty that scoured her bones, that her stepmother's hands were far from clean. I need air, she bit out, to no one in particular. She spun on her heel, not waiting for a response, and stalked towards the French doors leading to the gardens. The cool night air kissed her flushed cheeks as she stumbled down the stone steps, 
gasping like she'd run a marathon. She gulped greedy lungfuls, desperate to chase the cloying stench of blood and deceit from her nostrils. Gravel crunched beneath her feet as she fled into the gardens, heedless of direction or destination. Thorny branches snatched at her clothes, scraped her skin, but she barely felt the sting. Physical pain was a distant thing, subsumed by the shattering anguish in her heart. At last, she fetched up against the trunk of an ancient oak, its gnarled bark digging into her spine through the thin silk of her blouse. Her knees buckled and she slid to the ground, fists pressed to her lips to stifle the scream building in her throat. With shaking hands, she wrenched a letter from her pocket and smoothed it open. Her mother's familiar script wavered before her, blurred by unshed tears. I never meant for you to carry this burden, to inherit the sins of those who came before. God knows I tried to shield you from it, to give you a life untainted by the shadows of the past. But in the end, I was a coward. Too afraid to confront the truths I'd run from for so long. Samantha's heart clenched, tears dripping onto the fragile paper, smudging the faded ink. Oh, Mom, she thought despairingly. What did you do? What secrets could be so terrible, so consuming, that you'd abandon your only child to outrun them? The letter went on, spelling out a tale of forbidden love and devastating betrayal. Of a young girl, seduced by a man she trusted above all others. A man who, beneath his genial smiles and avuncular affection, hid a soul as black as tar. Vivian's father. Her own grandfather. Byla scorched Samantha's throat, revulsion shuddering through her frame. The pieces clicked together with sickening clarity, the furtive glances between Vivian and her father heavy with unspoken history. The way Vivian had always looked at Samantha, equal parts guilt and loathing. As if she couldn't stand the sight of her, the living reminder of her family's darkest sins. And Lucas. God, Lucas. The consuming forbidden desire that had always crackled between them, tempered by shame and self-flagellation. Because how could they give voice to the truth screaming in their blood? That the love they shared was untainted by the poison of shared lineage? They could have had everything. Could have faced the world together, two jagged halves made whole. If only she'd been brave enough to confront the skeletons in their closet, drag the fetid secrets into the light. Instead, she'd run, abandoned him to the mercies of their twisted family, the festering wounds that had metastasized in the dark. Just like her mother had abandoned her. The cruel symmetry of it, the generational trauma echoing down the years, brought fresh tears scalding down her cheeks. Would they ever break free of this cycle, the curse that seemed to dog their bloodline? Or were they doomed to repeat the sins of their forebears, an Ouroboros of anguish devouring itself. Oh, Mom. The broken whisper scraped her raw throat. What do I do now? How do I fix this? She thought back to her mother's last words, scrawled at the bottom of the page like an epitaph. I failed you, my darling. Failed to protect you from the shadows that have haunted me all my life. But you, you have a chance to break this cycle. To forge a path out of the darkness, towards a future of your own making. You have the strength I never did. The courage to look the ugly truth in the eye and not flinch. To confront the demons of the past and send them howling back to hell where they belong. So fight, Samantha. Fight for the life you deserve. The love you deserve. Defy the sins of the fathers and write a new story in the blood and bones of our cursed family. I believe in you. I have always believed in you, and I will be with you every step of the way. Samantha closed her eyes, pressed the letter to her heart like a talisman. Resolve crystallized in her chest, hard and glittering as a diamond. Her mother was right. Running was no longer an option. She had to stand her ground, face the twisted secrets and sordid truths head on. Had to cauterize the wounds of the past, no matter how much it burned. For herself, for Lucas, for the chance to rise from the ashes of their family's sins, reborn and phoenix bright. She would not let the sins of the father define her. She was more than the poisoned blood in her veins, the twisted circumstances of her birth. She was Samantha fucking Ray.
a survivor, a fighter. And it was high time she claimed her truth, carved her own path through the shadows. Slowly, she pushed to her feet, every muscle aching with renewed purpose. She tucked her mother's letter into her pocket, a talisman against the dark, drew a deep, shuddering breath of the crisp night air, let it cleanse the cobwebs from her lungs. Then she turned back towards the house, spine straight and shoulders squared, ready to confront her demons, both living and dead.